And we will proceed with the first uh, panel, the Greek ICT, a modern hub for entrepreneurship. So I would like now to pass the floor to the panel's moderator, Mr. Jacques Darcy, head of the technology transfer team at EIF. Jacques, the, the floor is yours. Hello, yeah, this works. Well, thank you for having me here. Um, it's, uh, it's exciting to, uh, to, to be in Greece. We, um, we at EIF are um, transforming public funds into investment uh, products, and that's a quite challenging depending on which environment you're in. Um, it's transformational finance, I would call it, and it's very much at the frontiers of, of innovation. And so there's no cookbook recipes where we can come to Greece and say this will work and this will not work. So there's a lot of listening and dialogue with the ecosystems on the ground so that we can play an effective role. And it's by no means a perfect, a perfect process and, and can be quite challenging. So it's exciting today that we can uh, rejoice in a way to hear what has been achieved so far. But also it's an opportunity for us to listen to the real actors in the innovation ecosystem. These people are in the trenches every day in very challenging conditions and that we listen and either rectify or improve or discontinue whatever has to be discontinued and expand whatever has to be, um, to be expanded. Um, I would like to, um, w it's very impressive to, and every time we come to Greece, the, the, um, and we were discussing it before with some people in the audience, the, the, the quality and the, the weight of a very well-connected Greek diaspora in US, uh, rest of Europe, Asia, and so on is, is, is a real asset. And you can see it in uh, the backgrounds of some of the people um, in, in the panel. And, and so I think that's a real theme in terms of how to attract capital and, uh, and, and companies and, um, and, and, and generate an ecosystem here. Um, what I would like to do is uh, make this very interactive, so anybody who has a question, please raise your hand and, and, um, and do interrupt rather than wait until the very end. Um, what we could do now is around and listen to a, you know, each of you present yourselves for a, a couple of minutes so that people in the audience know who, um, who you are. Um, maybe we can start with the two fund managers um, from, from Greece. Um, uh, Georgios, maybe you can say a few words about your background and why are you here? Uh, first of all, thank you. It's great to, to be here and having you all uh, with us. Uh, let me summarize in a couple of minutes our humble story so far. Uh, seven years ago, we, uh, we started to, to organize a series of events, getting together people with interest in technology and entrepreneurship. The events uh, were called Open Coffee, and uh, we started to create a community out of those events. We were trying to create our own startups, Georgios Kasselakis, my partner, and myself back then. And uh, as the time was passing, uh, we failed in our startups, but at the same time, a community got created. And we realized that pretty much all people uh, in this community were facing the same problems, which were uh, the lack of any kind of available capital to begin a company, and the lack of proper advice from people who have been there and done that. So we decided to, to try and address those problems, and four years ago, we created the first the first open fund, the original, the original open fund. Our intention was to, uh, to provide entrepreneurs with great ideas about innovative software products with small amounts of money, ranging from 20,000 to 50,000 euros. And we managed to raise uh, about half a million euros and make eight investments for, uh, for, for a couple of years, starting from 2009 to 2011. Out of those eight investments, you may be aware of Taxibit, we have managed to, uh, to return the initial amount of investment four times in nominal terms. And we, re we realize that there is a great opportunity in trying to, to do this more properly. And this is how the next iteration of the Open Fund uh, occurred, with the support of the EIF, of course. So uh, we started Open Jeremy Open Fund 2 uh, back in previous December. And we have already made eight investments, and we have uh, allocated 1.5 million euros. And we expect to allocate another million in the next couple of months. 
Now we are investing 50, uh, we are investing 50,000 euros to, five, uh, to 500 euros uh, in, in companies with internationally innovative ideas about software products who are which are trying to disrupt uh, big markets. And that's our, our humble story so far. We are a 10 million euros fund with five partners and we expect to, uh, to do up to 25 or 30 investments by end of 2015. Thank you, Georgos. Maybe I can ask Lucas now to introduce yourself. Hello. Uh, good morning again, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, meet here with the EIF and uh, our partners in this effort. The, uh, our story starts a little bit similar with uh, George uh, uh, as we were a group that supported uh, the first open fund 50 percent in uh, the creation and uh, operation, and we invested directly in this aid. Uh, obviously, the just go this because it goes up and down. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm not a technology guy. <laughs> <laughs> I will fall like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that started in 2009 when we created a group, uh, the Venture Capital and Private Equity Group of the uh, Piraeus Bank group of companies from people that they returned from abroad and Greeks uh, and foreigners along with uh, our partners and advisors created a group of nine people plus or our uh, external advisors where we funded the eight companies uh, in Open Fund first and we uh, created three other funds. Technology was always, since the beginning, our main focus. We've invested in our VC fund uh, and also in Piraeus Jeremy Tech Catalyst, which is uh, our fund on the seed side. We run 100 million overall uh, assets under management. Uh, 25 uh, companies invested uh, in these four years across the different uh, strategic sectors. PJ Tech Catalyst now, specifically, is part of our strategy to create a timeline of investments from very early stage to later stage uh, in private equity. Uh, it filled a huge gap where we had companies like the companies from Open Fund One to fit the next step, and that was a main uh, problem that we were facing in this country. We invested in seven companies. Um, we have actually a strategic cooperation with the uh, Quest group of companies, which is the biggest IT company in Greece, and we've created the IQbility business incubator, which is the only incubator in Greece that also offers money um, and along with the services. We have two out of these companies on a pre-seed level and the five are on a seed level. Uh, we have invested in uh, this 15 million, this is a little bigger fund, 15 million fund, uh, which can invest up to 750,000. Uh, we have invested a million and a half and uh, we're continuing our effort along with a network of partners from uh, the US, we have people that are based out of the US and other European countries. So hopefully this covers what we are, we are trying to do until now and uh, you will hear some of our very good teams here. Thank you, um, Lucas. Um, now we have three rare species in these type of conferences, which is the, you know, the people in the trenches, meaning former or, or current entrepreneurs, the ones actually making it happen. Um, we invited Lubin because um, at EIF we invested in his fund in Bulgaria, so we thought it's an interesting neighbor to, to, to have here and uh, to, to learn both ways um, uh, about uh, his, his experience, both Prior, prior to setting up this fund as an entrepreneur, very successful entrepreneur, but also since um, setting up his investment, uh, investment fund. So, uh, Ruben, maybe. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Um, first of all, I'm an entrepreneur by heart, and uh, unfortunately, I moved to the dark side a few years ago. Uh, I have founded the largest uh, and most successful internet company in Bulgaria, which we have exited in 2008, uh, which is by far the largest exit, digital exit in Bulgaria. Uh, since then, I have started investing, and um, uh, we, we uh, together with the help of EIF, uh, as our only LP, uh, founded Launch Hub, which is a 9 million euro fund uh, focused on uh, seed investment in digital, the digital domain. We are actually looking for companies that are 
to some extent um, trying with the help of technology to, uh, to change uh, existing industries with some inefficiencies uh, such as uh, education, healthcare, entertainment, so on and so forth. And uh, we're, we have uh, 25 investments so far. Uh, we have deployed approximately 2 million euros. And uh, what is uh, mostly interesting for us is that uh, besides uh, that, uh, we have managed to, to, uh, to find uh, co-investors uh, that have put approximately 600,000 euros and the follow-on investors that uh, have uh, invested approximately 3 million euros so far including uh, the famous uh, Tim Draper from uh, DFJ uh, in, the, in the Valley, and um, uh, Early Bird, which is also uh, a fund that is uh, being sponsored by the European Investment Fund. Uh, our investment thesis is that um, uh, we definitely are uh, investing in uh, teams, and the team comes first, and uh, after all, is, uh, all, all uh, that uh, follows. Um, so that's it. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Ruben. Um, Fanny, maybe you can introduce uh, yourself, your, your background. It's, it's, it's very interesting because I think it, it epitomizes the, one of uh, Greece's opportunities, which is the ICT sector and, and software in particular. The barriers to entry in, in, in ICT and in, in, uh, in, in software development are lower in terms of investment than in biotech or other sectors. So this is a theme that is, you know, uh, permeates this conference. Is it should how to build, you know, a hub of um, new technologies in the ICT sector in, um, in Greece. So your experience is, is very interesting and telling. Hello. Uh, actually, how I started, uh, when I started, uh, no VC was uh, around uh, here in Greece. Uh, I studied uh, computer engineering and uh, back in uh, 2010 I chose to drop out my college and uh, start my own venture. Uh, my company does uh, real-time and uh, predictive analytics for the fragmented retail channel. Uh, the fragmented retail, although it's uh, only non-organized shops, uh, corner stores, convenience shops, just around the corner, uh, they have a huge uh, amount of uh, annual turnover. Only in Greece, for example, uh, the turnover of the retail for the fast-moving consumer goods uh, from the fragmented channel is 55% uh, in contrast to 45% that comes from the organized hypermarkets, etc. Et uh, so uh, we had an idea. Uh, we started uh, our business uh, the very first day after IMF officially established in Greece. <laughs> this is something I believe. And uh, back then we could not uh, even imagine having uh, VCs uh, in our door, having uh, money to build our business, to make our company bigger. Uh, we bootstrapped, we had uh, really, really limited uh, resources, and uh, you couldn't even hear the word startup, that uh, right now it's all over the press. Uh, so I think this is a huge opportunity for uh, our country to change the entrepreneurial culture because we had the severe lack of entrepreneurial culture uh, as a nation. Uh, now, all of this ecosystem shows that there is another choice, another way, uh, other than a corporate uh, career or uh, just commerce or public sector. <laughs> that was just the case uh, for our country. So I hope that uh, we will uh, develop really interesting uh, ICT structures, uh, new companies that will drive uh, innovation and uh, our growth uh, generally. Thank you, Fanny. Um, Anton is now in a very different sector and we typically um, ask our speakers not to make announcements. So we, he has a very interesting announcement to make. So uh, we, 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 uh, we actually asked him to, uh, to, to make it here. So please can you present your, you know, your venture and where you're at in, in, in its development. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Antonio Sciorakis. I'm one of the founders of Incrediblue.com. Incrediblue is the first peer-to-peer -peer boat rental marketplace. Uh, to put it simply, it's like a booking.com for boats. When we started Incrediblue, we actually wanted to change the way an industry worked. That industry was the nautical tourism industry and bring a lot of efficiency in it, but we also wanted to expand this market. We wanted to introduce new people 
into the experience of boating, into the experience of having holidays or city breaks or everything on a boat. The, the problem was that a lot of people thought that uh, boating and boat rentals are just for sailors or are very expensive. expensive. This is something that we managed to remove as a myth uh, this summer with our, uh, our very first uh, season. And um, the, the reason we're here today is because we had received our first uh, funding as a company from, the Jer from Jeremy Open Fund eight months ago. And we'd like to announce today uh, a new round of half a million euros led by the Open Fund uh, with the participation of uh, angel investors. Very good. So um, now that we know who's in the panel, um, can I ask uh, Diorgos and Lucas to give us the view of an investor? What is happening in Greece? It's very useful for us to hear you. Uh, what's your assessment of it, it's very tough times in Greece? Maybe they're improving or they're being less tough, but we, are, we do know that it's extremely tough to be on the ground here. And uh, w what's the current investment uh, environment? Uh, what, what's the situation concerning deal flow, availability of funding? Um, is it changing? What are your projections and expectations for the future? Um, Lucas, maybe you can start. Sure. And obviously the comments will focus on uh, ICT uh, uh, specifically because there, some sectors have different uh, characteristics. But for ICT, uh, with uh, the uh, great assistance of the program from uh, EIF and the, the structural funds from the Greek government, I think uh, it's been a great push to have the availability of funds at this point um, and also create, start creating the ecosystem. With uh, the uh, first open fund in those four years since, we, we hopefully created, along with George, the angel uh, environment, which didn't exist actually. You're seeing that a lot more, both from our invest, investing companies and uh, Open Fund uh, to investing companies. You start seeing a lot more angel investors. That's number one point. Number two point is very important that uh, the the young generation and the the crisis has helped in in that is focusing more into more creative, more innovative products, uh, more becoming, as Fanny said, uh, entrepreneurs and holding their own fate in their own hands. So that has instigated the mindset uh, to uh, go that direction. Number third uh, point, which is important for investors, is that we do have a very strong human capital increase uh, on technical uh, abilities, uh, especially technology related. Uh, and we have that benefit and we're seeing it. And hopefully this will develop and we're trying to develop it to become a regional uh, R&D hub for a lot of companies, startups in ICT wor uh, world here in Greece. So, a good initial investment um, environment. And inventory varies. We, we saw, I think, uh, an influx of uh, some, uh, quite a few uh, initial companies. Then we, we, we saw a dip in that uh, part, but I think now we're starting again both a little bit more quantity and quality coming back. So hopefully we're, we're optimistic that we will see uh, the right uh, combination of things. And uh, we should consider that in investment environment doesn't mean only money. Uh, we'll talk, I think, during this panel and next panel of the importance of the advisor, of the advice uh, part as well and how to help these companies grow. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I, I think you, you, you're right. Coaching, um, accompanying, challenging, uh, you know, taking to the next level is, is, is as important, if not more, than, than, than funding. Um, Georgos, what's your view of today's, you know, where is Greece today for you as an investor? Uh, actually, let me provide you with some numbers. When we first approached the EIF in order to, to set up Jeremy Open Fund number two, our initial intention was for this fund to be a 5 million euros fund. And that's why uh, we didn't believe that, we're, that there are enough companies out there to allocate a bigger amount of capital. A year after our launch, we have already committed 2.5 million euros. And there are some good chances that our 10 million euros fund is still small and we will require some, a further amount of capital. So this should give you an idea about uh, how fast the ecosystem matures. Now, with, on, uh, with regards to the, uh, to the capital side of things, uh, we first created the, we created the first open fund just because there, there were no angel investors out there willing to take the risk 
and invest in, uh, in new technology companies. Uh, we managed to found five such investors for the first open fund, and we are very grateful that we have another 11 to, uh, to join us in this current iteration. Uh, and also on top of that, in four out of uh, uh, our eight uh, investments so far, we have, uh, we have done those along with uh, some angel investors. So we do believe that the ecosystem matures in both sides uh, at a speed uh, that we, we didn't expect initially, and we are quite optimistic for the future. Thank you. Um, Lubin, maybe you can, can you tell us how does this compare to what you see in Bulgaria? Point number one. Point number two is, can you elaborate a bit on as to your own model of developing companies, creating and funding um, new, new, new ventures? Because I think it would be interesting to know, well, both to know how it works, but also to see if there's something comparable in Greece, or, uh, and if so, where, where, it, where it, uh, it exists. Well, <clears throat> it's uh, quite, uh, sim uh, quite uh, the same uh, in, in uh, Sofia. Uh, just uh, approximately two years ago, there was uh, nothing, uh, even though uh, there were people that were, uh, have managed to, to have some, um, uh, some uh, good exits, uh, and there was uh, capital uh, through the angels, but uh, the ecosystem was not, uh, not there yet. And uh, when we are talking about uh, ecosystems, it's not only about the capital. The capital is one of the things, but uh, more or less there are several other things that uh, have to be present there. Uh, for instance, uh, the uh, universities, uh, for instance, the recycled capital, uh, some uh, industry events and uh, mentors, so on and so forth. So what happened uh, in, in Sofia is that uh, uh, with uh, the, um, the Jeremy Initiative, and uh, the, the funds that have been established uh, just uh, on close to one and a half year ago, the ecosystem completely changed, mainly because there is already institu institutionalization of the, of the investment, and there are plenty of uh, angels and people that are willing to co-invest together with us. For, for instance, our uh, ticket is just 200K, uh, however, we were uh, able, uh, capable to, to uh, attracting co-investors. And what we do is closing the, the gap between the seed and uh, the next round investments through uh, attracting co-investors together with us to, to put some money. So this is uh, quite, a, quite an interesting thing. We, we uh, more or less are very active in the uh, uh, fundraising on the, on the uh, deal on the portfolio company level rather than fundraising for the for the fund itself um, and um, just uh, just to to give you an impression uh, when when uh, i started in 1998 uh, we have spent approximately half a million on on servers and uh, all this infrastructure now this is damn uh, uh, cheap you can you can just with 50000 you can absolutely go ship a product and see whether there is any interest from from the from the uh, customers and this is quite a change that uh, has happened uh, during the during the the recent years is the, can you yeah is the investment theme in bulgaria um, to create global champions or are these mainly addressing the, the let's say the national market as we uh, have very uh, successful companies in the enterprise uh, software uh, uh, space, uh, segment, uh, we uh, see more and more interest from the entrepreneurs to address, uh, the, to address the, 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 the big problems and to democratize uh, very big markets. And uh, for instance, we have an investment of ours that is trying to change the cable industry, uh, the cable TV industry. We have another one that is uh, very active in the, uh, in the storage. So what I would like to see from not only Bulgaria, but from the region, we, we need a billion dollar company floated and exited with recycled capital. And this is going to be good for, for the region as a whole, because this is going to, to provide uh, the region with the uh, ability and the strength that uh, we, uh, uh, we can uh, provide and we can build such companies. 
So uh, to, to answer shortly, yes, there are more and more people that are looking to compete on the global marketplaces. And how available, how easy is it for, say, somebody like Fanny's, for example, with an idea to, to, to get the funding? And, and um, what's the situation? Has it improved? Definitely has, it has improved, but uh, as I said, it's not only uh, the most important thing is not only the idea, uh, the, the most important thing is uh, the execution and the speed. Plenty of people are in this room are thinking uh, uh, or out there are thinking uh, of, uh, I'm sure that plenty of people have thought how they can do the things with the, with the boats, but you were the one that uh, have uh, done it and uh, have executed. So it's about speed and execution and the idea is good, uh, it's important, but uh, it's very easy to, be, uh, to find initial funding for the idea. The one that matters is the entrepreneur himself, the founder, and how capable is he to run fast and to, to, to execute and deliver. And can you give us an idea of the quantum? How many companies have you supported? Uh, we have... Uh, uh, we have uh, went through 1,500 applications so far. We have met approximately more than 250 companies. We have invested in just 25 of them. And uh, yeah, this is uh, actually not unseen in the venture capital uh, mm -hmm. universe. Very interesting. Lucas, how does this compare to what you see in Greece? Does this type of approach exist in Greece? Should it be developed? Sure, and, and actually, uh, as Luben said, that there, there are commonalities. And I think uh, we're seeing that with what uh, we're trying to do. Early stage funding now exists, so companies get the access to uh, money, get the access to the coaching component. We have the incubation processes that help a lot to structure some of these companies because business models may be not fully developed. Very good teams are out there with... Uh, uh, people like uh, George and us uh, using their gut feeling on getting to the point of deciding who to invest. We do, we do have the creation of uh, a new ecosystem. It's in uh, an influx point at this point. We, we're seeing a lot of incubators, accelerators, uh, and co-working spaces. So all the components are there. I think they, they need to start coming together so that they create a new generation of uh, companies. Uh, but process-wise and uh, investment-wise, I think it's a very similar uh, approach. And is, when, when you get your applications or, or mid-young, entre budding entrepreneurs, how do you help them in the business? Be very strong technically. What do you put in place? How do you, de you know, deploy coaching in, in an efficient way? Sure. And this question is also valid for Jorgos. How, how do you do it? Because it's, it's time... You know, it, it, it's money equals time, so you need to do it efficiently and, and in a systematic way. Absolutely, and, and two things. Before we talk about advisors uh, and coaching, we have uh, one of our management team members, Costas Malios, is based out of Seattle in the U.S., in the big private equity uh, group in technology. And also we have people in the East Coast, so what there is uh, be able to see the trends and try to marry them with uh, the inventory that we have here in Greece from a human capital perspective. So we're looking at three types of models. We're looking at teams with business models that help. In that respect, we have uh, a pool of advisors in different competencies across the technology sector. They all have uh, operational experience. It's very important to have worked, almost failed, possibly failed, lost money, lost your job if you have invested in the wrong uh, investment so that you can pass this message on to your companies. This we use uh, on an allocated basis, so each of our investee companies gets allocated one advisor along with a pool of others, but one advisor uh, who will follow them for a couple of years with an allocation of their time and be it business strategy, be it commercialization, opening doors, be it CTO type of uh, need, any kind of need is getting married to uh, the uh, investee companies we have. The other thing we're looking into is companies, uh, teams with business model, so that we can marry them with foreign companies that we're trying to bring into Greece and use Greece as uh, the regional, their uh, R&D hub. Uh, that's a hard thing. Um, 
depth is not yet there, uh, structure is not yet there, but uh, it's a big opportunity for us to create this as a universe. Georgos, how, how do you organize yourselves for, for this very crucial part of the investment? Actually, we start with small investments. We invest, let's say, from 50 to 100k euros in some uh, really solid teams with uh, uh, some idea and with an idea for an innovative service addressing a big market. Uh, and I think Incredible is a prime example of this. We put 100k euros uh, eight months ago. They didn't have a really uh, a solid product by then, but. They took the money, they built the product, they put it out in the market, uh, they added, I think, about 500 ships in your, in your fleet, uh, boats, yeah, sorry. Uh, they also made uh, some hundreds of bookings, and now here they are, and we are here to put more money in the company, along with a number of angel investors, in order for it to mature, to extend its operations, uh, and improve their business. So, First, we're trying to help companies build their product. And since the product is there and you will have seen some market traction, some validation that it actually uh, creates some value for its users, we are, uh, we are here to, to continue our, uh, our financing and put more money on the table. Uh, I would like to highlight, however, the importance of doing the basic things first, rather than talking about a number of advisors and, of course, we have get tremendous, va uh, tremendous value from our advisors so far. But I think it is of primary importance to be efficient in, in what we primarily do, which is financing startups. So we're trying to, uh, to, to reach a decision really fast to help those companies uh, get the money uh, quite soon after our, our, our decision and actually to, to help the entrepreneurs uh, to focus on what they, they know to do really well while we take care of the rest. Okay, that's a very good answer. Now I'd like to hear from the entrepreneurs, Antonis and Fanny's. What was, and I know it's a difficult question because we should ask them to leave the room and then tell us the truth, but uh, what, what was your actual experience and also what would you have liked to have or what should be developed for the next generation that uh, you, you think would have been useful in your case? Uh, Okay. Talking from the VC side or... Uh, On your coaching, helping you with business, you know, with business um, contacts, experience, um, helping, you, helping you develop the business. And it's, uh, it's really, really important because cash flow may be the king, but uh, only money are just useless. You can spend your money in uh, <laughs> like a quarter. So uh, having the right people with you uh, having the guidance, the mentoring is uh, really, really important because, as Lucas said, the, the the most important thing is to change the mindset and create. It's the first uh, generation of uh, new age entrepreneurs for here for for, uh, for Greece. So it's uh, really, really important to guide those uh, people properly. Mm -hmm. Antonis, what was your experience? Uh, I think that just like just as uh, Fanny's when started, there was no startup ecosystem. Now there is an ecosystem because there is the know-how and there is the capital, and that's exactly what we needed. The next thing that we need is uh, experience. So all of us here who are having startups and who are gathering this experience can you know, transmit this to each other. And building a network of experienced partners and suppliers, I think, is the most important thing. From a lawyer that knows how to deal with a startup to an accountant, the, the simplest stuff. You know, to growth experts, etc. So. so, does this mean you um, you would like to have, say, meetings like this, where you meet everybody in the ecosystem? Does that exist in in Greece today? Um, is that something that should be helped developed? Um, sure. Well, the last uh, two or three years, uh, there is a strong wave of uh, active entrepreneurship. Uh, events like Open Coffee. Uh, we have uh, more closed events like CEO's Breakfast, for example, mm -hmm. where uh, only 10 or a dozen CEOs we meet every month in order to exchange ideas, uh, case studies, uh, what works uh, for whom, etc. So, uh, as I said, the ecosystem makes its baby steps, but uh, this is uh, really, really important. And this is happening in Greece right now.
Okay. And uh, VC money is uh, actually a leverage mm -hmm. in order to kickstart this thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, maybe back to the Greek specific the specificities of the Greek market from Luxembourg from EIF. Um, we there's no such thing as a European VC innovation tech transfer ecosystem. There's, there's, you know, we may have 27 or 35, depending on where you look. And even inside different countries, we, there are different ways of doing things. Uh, there are many reasons for this. You know, historically, it's been, developed, it's been set up in a different way. The way people interact is very different and so on. So when you look at... Um, Greece specifically, what would you say are the, you know, the strengths, what adaptations do you have to make to be efficient in this ecosystem today? And, and, and maybe also capitalize on its, its strengths such as the Greek diaspora, which is so connected and, uh, and so on. What, what, can you tell us more about what, what this budding, emerging Greek uh, VC model uh, can look like in five or ten years? Speaking from, well, we'll, we'll uh, differentiate obviously from uh, an investor to an entrepreneur from a perspective, but they come together as well. Uh, entrepreneurs, just to cover that, uh, they're out there, the new generation, they're, they're young guys, uh, and not so young guys and ladies, uh, excuse me, uh, and uh, with uh, new culture, commitment, focus, um, understanding innovation, uh, understanding their markets, understanding the competition, and wanting to see this as a, a lifetime uh, opportunity rather than a lifestyle, as uh, we saw in the beginning of this program. From, an, from uh, an investor perspective, we all learn. This is an educational process. Uh, venture capital uh, in Greece, although uh, it goes back theoretically 30 years, it has really been developed the last five uh, years in a much more... Uh, open way, I should say, uh, even from the beginning of uh, uh, the 2003 with a venture capital uh, structure uh, in Greece. However, we're still in evolution. Um, in five years from now, most probably, with the complementarity and the cooperation we've done, as you will hear in the other panel, we've already have the first co-investment in this uh, sector from two funds. We will do more. Um, people are talking to each other. It's important. People understand international standards, it's important. Uh, people are understanding the local intricacies. Greek culture, regional culture is a little bit different. It's very important to have that local flair. Focusing on the think big from early on, it's happening. Having human capital is here. Utilizing the universities and the potential intellectual property um, protection is almost here. Uh, assistance of the universities, we're trying. So there is a lot that is being built in Greece these days that uh, there are normal nascent stages of a new uh, ecosystem in the build-up. It's nothing different to what we've seen uh, in the world. Well, but I'm curious to know, for example, Jorgos, um, here you have a um, small country in terms of population, very international historically. Um, when you say VC started 30 years ago, I think Odysseus was some form of VC very early. No, but uh, it, 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 the Greeks have been particularly very entrepreneurial very, you know, throughout centuries. So there's something here which is not, you were not moving from a, a bunch of you know, government bureaucrats who 30 years ago discovered VC. This has been a country which has been extremely entrepreneurial. H how, for example, you have a, main, a mainland and then quite a few islands. So how do you operate with that? I mean, is everything happening only in Athens? How do you liaise with Corfu, Crete, and so on, where there are very interesting uh, technologies and ideas coming from? Do you go to those islands and set up events? How, how, how does that work in practice? Uh, well, he's, he's an investor. He's not a technology person. Uh, can so, for example, can you hear me now? Better, better. Uh, we have an investment in Thessaloniki. Uh, Incredibly is based in Volos. Uh, there are more investments uh, in the beyond Athens, uh, if you ask me. I don't think that it is that hard uh, nowadays for information to get distributed across the land. Uh, of course, we have a number of companies in Athens as well. 
However, talking about uh, models, I don't think that we need to blindly replicate an, a model from another country. Of course, we're not the first uh, venture capital fund, and there are, uh, there are lots of learnings to, to, uh, to take advantage of. However, I think that we primarily need to apply common sense and work hard, and uh, who knows, maybe in a couple of decades, some people will uh, get back and say, this is the, the Greek model that we just, uh, get, uh, that we just created. And um, can tell us um, sure. something more about his experience in this respect. And more specific, uh, with the, uh, yes, we do visit. Um, yes, we work uh, not only with local communities, which means universities, technology centers, trying to create networks with uh, uh, those universities and help them develop incubation processes and uh, identification of uh, deal flow. We also um, cooperate, either with co-working spaces, there are a couple of co-working spaces uh, here in uh, Athens, uh, but outside Athens as well, we, we, you will read pretty soon, possibly today, there is a program, an acceleration program, which will be run in northern Greece from Innovation Farm in many cities, and we are uh, their uh, partner in the potential funding for the uh, demo day. So we're talking about cities like Edessa, Drama, Kavala, small cities outside that realm of Athens, Patras, Thessaloniki, Volos or Crete that they are the main technology center in Greece. Uh, so the effort is there. Obviously we need to see uh, how it uh, develops, but the ongoing effort is uh, definitely there. Lubin, any any you know suggestions or learnings coming from Sofia in this respect? How do you cover the territory? I just put a note that there's uh, there are such events in northern Greece, so we have to attend there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, once again, the question. Sorry. But how do you cover the? Here you have a mainland and yeah, quite a okay. few important yeah. islands, not just Got a it. few small yeah. ones. How, what's the reality of Bulgaria yeah. in this Got respect? It. Well, uh, Bulgaria is uh, smaller than, than Greece. We are 7 million, Greece is 11. Uh, and uh, uh, what, uh, what is uh, the, the good thing about Bulgaria is that uh, we have a very high density of engineering talent and a very low density of, uh, of uh, large international companies that are competing for that talent. Uh, so, to some extent, uh, this is uh, a bit complementary to the, to the approach that you are trying to implement here to open uh, R&D hubs here. Uh, for us, uh, to some extent, it is a bit better not to have all the big guys coming and competing for our talent, and I'm absolutely open to, uh, and I'm happy to, to fund as much engineers as, as possible. Uh, so what we are doing actually is uh, we are trying to attract uh, talent from uh, all over the, the Central and Eastern Europe, Europe uh, 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 region, uh, out of 25 investments, approximately uh, uh, seven or eight are uh, from uh, Romania, Greece, uh, Macedonia, uh, and uh, um, uh, Slovenia, and uh, Croatia. So uh, what happens uh, with us is that we, uh, to some extent, uh, are trying to fund the big, uh, the, the good the good uh, uh, engineering teams as, and help them with connections with, uh, with uh, respective uh, uh, mentors and people that could help them in, in, uh, from, from uh, Bulgaria. And uh, another thing that is uh, uh, very interesting is that um, uh, what, what we are seeing is that um, most of the teams are considering uh, going to Bulgaria for, for quite uh, some time, but then they want to make the bridges to the other hubs which are very uh, important, like Silicon Valley or London and so on and so forth. And uh, I, I must say that uh, some of the European uh, VCs uh, like Intel Capital and so on and so forth, they, they uh, come to Sofia and to the region and uh, are very astonished to see that uh, our region stands out. Okay, very... Um that's very interesting. Maybe, um, uh, Lucas, you, can, you mentioned before, w one of the themes going forward for Greece could be you have a lot of well-trained engineers. Most of them will speak English and be very connected, have you know, ideas. How do you attract 
large or, or small companies to set up either shop in, in, in Greece or to develop their technologies in R&D in Greece? How, how do you do it um, uh, concretely? In where you cannot go for a devaluation, um, so that's, that's already controlled, so you cannot lower your costs like that. Uh, how does that work in practice? Yeah. Sure. First of all, the co And we have 10 minutes um, left. So. The valuation happens in different ways, so uh, we have lowered our cost. Um, Non-political comment. Number two, though, in, in uh, the respect of how we do it, is there two things. Two main things. One is diaspora. You talked about that. And diaspora in uh, Greek diaspora is not only in the U.S., it's all over the world. And with our connections, we have posted in universities. And uh, the second thing is we're cooperating with uh, early stage seed funds from different countries where technology is strong uh, and related technology centers. We're working towards creating a network so that we can exchange with our incubator teams that they may be coming here or we're sending our teams uh, there as well and create this uh, um, exchange which uh, makes deal flow a little bit better. Um, and uh, we have already done that with uh, Holland, we are uh, very close with uh, Israel and uh, we are also looking in the US and in the UK. So that creates a network of ongoing circulation of deal flow and exchange of ideas and competencies. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'll, we'll, I'd like to open it up for questions very quickly. Uh, one last question to Antonis and, and Fanny's is, what do you experience as you want probably to build a very large company, a real success, global success? What are, what are the main challenges today that you experience in Greece? Is it funding? Is it lack of connections? What, what, is it the geographic situation? What, what, what is keeping you from, you know, what, what, to, from going faster towards your goal? I want to say that uh, building a multi-million company is really hard and hard and it's not for the hard fainted people but uh, although it may be hard it's not uh, that complicated so I would call that it, it's simple stuff that you have to do but it's uh, in a hostile environment funding uh, as it seems uh, the last couple of years is not an issue anymore so you have opportunities uh, being well connected it's uh, really important but uh, it's up to you you have to be competitive in a global level. You cannot just see the Greek market because we are a really, really small market. Uh, so I think it's uh, up to the entrepreneur and the team to be top class in what he does. Antonis, what's your view on this? I, I will agree that funding is not an issue anymore. In the, in the past, maybe we would have to look for, we could not start a company in Greece, we would have to look for investment in the UK or Germany or US. So we are very lucky to be able to do our first steps here and then grow. I think in our case, we are very glad that we're in Greece because it makes sense due to the kind of business that we're in. We wouldn't be that uh, good if we were in, in Berlin. It wouldn't make any sense. Uh, but the diff I think that th there are two things. One is the experience that I mentioned earlier. So we need experienced people to be by our side and be able to you know, uh, offer win-win situations for both. And the other thing is probably human resources. Uh, we just need to always be able to attract uh, very talented people within our teams. And um, uh, this may be a challenge when you're a startup and when all the talented people are maybe thinking of going abroad. Mm -hmm. So we just need to, you know, maintain our talent within the, the region and make them join us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, before one last... Oh, you Actually, I wanted to add uh, one last thing. Uh, for me, my company is now funded by PJ Tech Catalyst. We started from th three people, now we are a dozen engineers. And actually, the biggest um, roadblock that we face is that although we have the funding and we have the money, and most of the money are going into taxation or operation costs that does not include the payroll. There are taxes on the payroll. So we've done uh, an exercise and uh, for example from uh, 300,000 euros in funding, the 117,000 euros were going first year directly back to the government. So I think uh, this just shows the, the picture here in Greece. <laughs> I'm sure there are government officials around. Um, so, oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. 
Very good. I invite questions from the audience. Are there uh, questions at this stage? Yes, you, do you have a mic? It's coming. Hello, my name is Antonis Markopoulos. Uh, I used to be a uh, Special Secretary in the Ministry of uh, Development uh, two years ago when we started this initiative. Uh, I have a small, a quick comment and two questions for George and Lucas and uh, one, one question for, for Farnes and uh, Antonis. Uh, the quick comment I have is that uh, this great event today uh, is because of an initiative started uh, three years ago from the Greek government. And the Greek government was the one that called the EIF and made this strategy and tried to allocate some funds in a different uh, direction than the past. So I'm saying that because it's not clear for everybody that this great thing here, this ecosystem that everybody talks, uh, started from from a Greek government initiative. So everybody here in Greece is, you know, we are very easy to blame, to undermine, and to underestimate the public sector and public servants and uh, the Greek government. But uh, I think one, when something is happening, it's good. It's good everybody to know that it's, this comes from a from, uh, Greek government initiative. Of course, the role of AIF was a major role because they knew how to do that. So we build up together a strategy and we implement this strategy. Uh, so, you know, uh, this, this event today is a very uh, great event and is a result of this thing. So the question now I have for George and uh, Lucas is how deep the market is in terms of quantity and more in terms of quality in Greece for the next maybe two, three years. The, que the, second second, uh, the second question is how difficult it is for you as a fund manager and for your investors to imagine a good exit because the companies are still operating in Greece. So how, how do you imagine an exit of your investments? And the question I have for Fannis and Andonis is uh, have you ever tried to, to expand internationally? And if yes, what is your feeling, what is your perception uh, as a Greek entrepreneur going out of your country trying to promote your idea, promote your product and your service and bring revenue and bring value to the company? How, how difficult is that for you nowadays that the, the reputation of our country is not uh, in, in the best uh, level that we would like to, to be? Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we can take other questions so that we can take them um, all together because we will be running out of time. I have a question from live streaming which is, um, what liberalization in Greece would you suggest, and I think you may have triggered this, uh, that would open up more opportunities for investments? So uh, maybe not only the tax issue, but you know, what other things could be liberalized to make it easier? Are there any other questions at this stage? Yes, there's one in the back. And we'll take one or two more, and then we'll answer and conclude. Yeah, good, good, good morning, uh, everybody. My name is Konstantinos Klisiaris. Uh, I would like to know what are the efforts of uh, European Investment Fund towards uh, reduction of uh, tax regime, and uh, also about uh, uh, the minimization of the startup costs. Um, I am uh, not an entrepreneur myself. I'm trying to, to be and call myself an engineer. I'm imagining things and working towards engineering them. I'm co-founder of an Israeli technological group, uh, InnovaCell Holdings, and uh, I would like to see um, Greek community m more being uh, united uh, as they are in Israel and. Uh, in much more uh, cheaper way to establish uh, a company. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe we can hear the views of the entrepreneur first. Yeah, sorry, but uh, I couldn't hear the question. Could you repeat? Uh... 
Well, let's take the, the you know the first question uh, from as well. uh, yes. yeah, Antonis. Actually, Antonis, uh, three years ago, I watched uh, one of your uh, speech concerning the Jeremy Fund, and uh, back then I just thought that okay, that's another public servant. <laughs> this is something that is never mm. going to happen here. But uh, here we are right now. The funds are active. Uh, we've been funded. So, congrats on that. Uh, other than that, uh, concerning the global expansion is uh, something that uh, certainly we have uh, in our planning for late uh, 2014. But uh, because we are addressing to emerging markets, uh, for us it's uh, quite uh, more complicated than just um, take the plane, go to San Francisco and <laughs> try to implement your model. Uh, we will figure it out, we are working on it, and uh, in one year from now we will have presence in uh, other countries as well. Georgos, what's your take uh, on? So, with regards to uh, Mr. Markopoulos' question, uh, I would like to be very clear. We were here before this Jeremy initiative and we intend to remain here right after that as well. However, uh, let's be realistic, without uh, this initiative of the government and the engagement of the EIF, we wouldn't have been able to have a fund of that size at this point. So I would like to be, to be very clear with that. And specifically, the engagement of the EIF has uh, lent us with experience in structuring the fund, with credibility in fundraising in especially difficult times, and with full, with full independence in running the fund and our operation. And all those are truly critical. Uh, what was the um, live on liberalization, so, so that, uh, that's also a question. I cannot next. comment on that, so mm -hmm. I have nothing to add on that. So. Okay, and then the cohesiveness, I think, in the back of the, you know, the Greek ecosystem, if I understood the question, with relative to, the, to what to, to happens the market, in Israel, for example. With regards to the market side that you also raised, I shared uh, a few figures before. Uh, I think that, of course, we're not, let's say, a, a mainstream market yet. Uh, yet. There are, let's say, thousands of companies out there. So what we primarily need is time and patience from each part of, from each one of us. And we are pretty comfortable that we, we will get there. Uh, things will, get, will continue to become better and better. The volume and the numbers in this ecosystem will continue to, to evolve and grow much bigger. And eventually, I personally believe that uh, within the next 10 or 15 years, uh, at least one out of three uh, big companies that will get created in Greece will be technology uh, in the technology sector. So, uh, and we as Open Fund and I guess all other uh, partners here, uh, we'll, our role here is to help those companies, to enable those companies to get created. Lucas, maybe uh, sure. last, uh, you know, last comments and, uh, and then uh, we will conclude rapidly. Sure. Running out of um, I think it's important in the eco ecosystem everybody to understand uh, their role. Uh, the government has a role in creating and uh, pushing things forward. That was done. EIF's role as an international manager with knowledge on how private equity is being run offered, in addition to what George said, Yorgo said, uh, the international standards that they need to exist in order to run this type of uh, funds and the pressure along with the market participants to the government to understand, to open up to other uh, uh, opportunities. Like the gentleman has been exposed to uh, Israel. The minister before spoke about the potential uh, cooperation uh, with uh, the Israeli uh, group so that we can get some models. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody's playing this role and the successful outcome will belong to everybody. Market size, for us, we've seen 300 companies, we've invested in seven. Deep, uh, uh, deep market is being created, as with every new market in this field. So we will see a lot more in the next few years. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, reply for the comment, Antonis. Internationalization uh, for Mr. Markopoulos. We are, as a company, already international. Just half of our fleet is based in Greece. And we start with the assumption that we will have inventory of boats in the major countries where people are looking to rent boats and people from other countries will come and rent them. Uh, what we saw this summer is that there was a huge demand from uh, Greece to rent in, within Greece, from Greek people renting boats in Greece, uh, which was a pleasant surprise. 
so we will keep working in that direction, you know, keep expanding, keep looking global. Well, thank you all very much. Um, um, my apologies for the next panel because we've run over our, our time, but I think these are very interesting questions. Um, the event doesn't end with the panels. There's a lunch afterwards, so we're happy to take other questions um, informally uh, uh, when we, we, we regroup. So thank you very much to all.